Hi, welcome back to the channel, I'm Michelle, and today I'm going to be doing my end of the year curriculum reviews. So I'm going to start with my four-year-old. He is in preschool. We started the school year in August, so he was three and a half. He's now four and a half. And my original plan for him was to actually wait another year to start preschool with him at home. But he really showed an interest and asked to do his own schoolwork. And I think a lot of that is due to, you know, seeing his older sisters. I also have an 11 and a seven-year-old. He sees them do that. So he's very, I want to be like them. I want to be a big kid too. Even on Fridays, sometimes I would have him, you know, not do it because it's our shorter day, but he would ask to do it. Well, what about my schoolwork? So these are the things that I included for him. So the first thing I had him do, which all of my kids have done, which is a letter of the week curriculum. So, and I can't show that to you because as soon as I use something and I'm not going to reuse it for another child, I give it away to another homeschooler. I need the extra space in my homeschool and I don't want to hold on to things forever. So I'm one of those people that I'm really excited to get rid of things once my kids have outgrown them. So it was done by Confessions of a Homeschooler. And it's not something if you have one child I would suggest doing. It's a lot of printing and laminating. But the activities are fun and it's very repetitive, which is actually very good for all of my children. But we enjoyed it. It worked for my oldest, it worked for my middle, it worked for my younger one. And because I had scheduled everything out with my older kids, and because they had done all the activities, everything was already prepared in an accordion folder. So there was zero prep work for me, which is really essential when you're talking about homeschooling multiple kids. So he finished that probably in about March. And it went really well. He enjoyed the activities. He enjoyed the routine. We were done, you know, 20, 25 minutes. That's all it took Monday through Friday. He liked it. I would say we, when we transitioned to doing other stuff after that, that week was a little bit hard for him. Transition is hard, I think, for all younger kids when they get into a routine and rhythm and that changes. There's some difficulties with that. So that week of transition to, okay, he wasn't quite ready to move on to kindergarten level work. So we were in this in-between time, which I'm going to talk about what we're do using for that in-between time. But he was my first child to go from the letter of the week curriculum and not be ready for all about reading level one. He does not, and that's just mainly based on the fact he does not have all of his phonic sounds down, which is completely fine. Again, he's started a lot younger than my others did, and he's just going at his own pace. The things we did this past year that he really liked is we did Chicka Chicka Boom Boom. And again, I did this with my middle child as well. I have the book. I have the little kind of felt tree. It does stand up by itself. You can move the branches and everything. And then I have all the uppercase and lowercase letters and they both curl on there. He really, really liked this. And in fact, I was planning to donate this um, or give it to another homeschool family when we were done, but he asked that I didn't. So I am still holding on to all these things until he is ready to get rid of them. But obviously every letter, um, every week we finished a letter, he got to add to the chicka chicka boom boom tree. He really liked that. One of the other things we incorporated was leapfrog. Now leapfrog worked really well for my older two kids learning their phonic sounds. Letter Factory especially, I think I have it here worked really well to cement um, letter sounds for them, but it's not really doing that with him. So we've tried different Letter Factory videos. Usually he would watch one of the Letter Factory, and Roku does have a bunch of these, and there's different apps on your TV that have them for free. You don't have to buy them. But these are the ones I've owned from you know past children. He'd watch one of those while I was finishing core work up with my older kids. So they're like 25 minutes, completely fine, educational, I'm not against screen time, especially when you have multiple kids, you're homeschooling. So he would normally finish his work, finish his calendar time, and then move into one of those leapfrog videos while I finished up with his sisters. But he really likes them, and I think it has helped, but it, I don't know if it's just because he's younger or he just you know needs more time than his sisters did, but he's not quite there yet. But I do think it has helped. One thing we also did was this Preschool Math at Home by Kate Snow. This went really well. I think it reminded me, you know, to play and to have that imagination and, you know, have like the tea parties where we count things out, get out the cars. He liked the finger play activities as well, but I think it worked really well. It was a nice introduction to math. And just like my middle child, after 
this, he will move into math with confidence, kindergarten. But this summer, we're just going to practice the concept learned in this. We're going to cement some of that information and also just have some fun with it. One of the things we did is letter tiles this past year. And I have the sandpaper, I believe they're the Montessori ones. Again, for my oldest, most of the things are from my older kids passed down, but I also know that they work really well. Some of the other things we did is he, so for every letter, we would add a letter to the sandpaper tile letters we knew. And again, he is probably three quarters through the alphabet that he can do, which is progress, but we're not quite ready. I really wanted to have every sound down before we enter all about reading the first level. So we're getting there and it's something we will continue to practice in the summer and I will link up above our summer plans for him. And then we just, you know, had some supplemental activities. So we have these Melissa, I believe they're Melissa and Doug. Yes, Melissa and Doug puzzles. So he really enjoys the numbers ones, the letter ones. And again, he can do these independently while I'm, you know, cause I'm rotating between kids during homeschooling. He can do this while he waits for me for to move on to the next thing. We of course also brought in different books. Like I said in my plans for him for preschool, we've done everything and added more in that I anticipated us doing. So we would read some of these as well. Especially when we were doing the math or the Kate Snow preschool at home. His uh, this does not necessarily have to do with math, but I thought I would show his favorite, absolute favorite book is this Cheerios book because you get to add the Cheerios where it's missing. So he did this almost on a daily basis. And then the other thing we had was this box, and this is just a random box of supplies I've used with my older two kiddos, things I've collected over the years so he could pick out different activities. He enjoyed doing the matching games in here. So he's obviously way past this kind of stuff. So I'm excited to actually get rid of those things, but there are a few things in here that he still really likes to do, like the Band-Aid bear. And again, you can tell this was from my older two because I took the time to laminate it. <laughs> um, I've laminated nothing for my third child because it doesn't need to last. Once he's done, we are done. So there's just various activities that he could do in here. The little Velcro sticky guys back when I was creative with my older ones. So he would pick out different activities for that uh, and he really enjoyed that. So the things that in March, I said he finished his letter of the week. So we transitioned into just doing these things. So this is just a wipe workbook here and every day we just work on our a different letter and this is something i had for my older two kids as well something i've been having him do is practice his name and the motivation behind this is actually at our library once you can write your name you get your own library card which everyone in my family has library cards we go through library books like crazy and then you get hoopla downloads and libby downloads with each library card so he's really excited to get his first library card. So I'm obviously not gonna show the tracing sheets because that's his name. I don't share my kids' names on this channel. On top of that, he practices letter sounds every day and I usually pick out three at a time and we go over the little letter sounds and we do it in different ways. Usually he has his stuffed bear help or we get out different cars or Hot Wheels and things and they drive up to the, car, or to the letters. Something else I talked about that I got at Ollie's. This is something I use with my older child and it's fun. It's just Curious George stories. And then within it, it has different activities. And then usually for fine motor skills, I will have him do one of these. Workbooks from Ollie's. And some of them are cut and paste. They're very similar to the Kumon workbooks that I did with my oldest when she was little. Some of them are tracing, some of them are just coloring, you know, simple mazes. So he will usually pick a sheet out of one of these, a lot of letter tracing in this one. He'll pick a sheet out of these and do it daily. 
And the only other thing we added in towards the end of the year, March, when we made that transition is I started using Core Knowledge Preschool. I'm not a big fan of the preschool, at least how they have it set up. It's really kind of difficult to actually implement in a homeschool setting. And I've used a lot of core knowledge in the past. I've used language arts, I've used science, I've used geography. And preschool is just, it has a lot of centers type activities, so group activities. And I'm not gonna go through the effort of all of that, setting up a, all these different centers when I have one child doing it, but I will pull different activities from it. So the rhyming games, and it does have beginner phonics, which is really helpful. So again, you don't have to follow it to a T. I just pull out the information I will use, like the picture books. And again, a lot of the picture books I had trouble finding because I think they are a bit older, but I would just do YouTube read alouds for that. But again, I do prefer having the physical book when we're doing different activities, like the author or talking about the spine of a book. And I could easily sub those out. I did that actually with a couple of them. I know we just, we're going over animals right now. I believe we're in the third unit for preschool, which is animals. So I had a book about different animal ears and what animal that was attached to. And you know, if this is the animal tail, you got to picture the tail, what was the animal on the other side? So it's easy to switch it out, I think, in preschool. I mean, during the body unit, it was easy to switch out a body book that we already had on hand. But it is one of the harder ones, I think, to implement in a homeschooling, at least from my experience using core knowledge, but I'm still using it. Because again, we're in this transitional period. I don't need to go out and buy a bunch of stuff for preschool or even kindergarten for that matter, especially when I have so many resources on hand for my older kids. But I do think it is helpful. Again, it's helping with beginner phonics. It's helping with rhyming and the nursery rhymes, something I might not necessarily do unless prompted to do, which is really nice in core knowledge. And their printables, I do like their printables. So they have a bunch of things that go with, um, the units you're learning about the different tracing activities and he does like that and i do like that he's learning you know some background knowledge we just learned about herbivores and carnivore carnivores so i think it's good that he has his specific time that he's diving a little deeper into it but the skills the writing and the math aren't necessarily something he has to have mastered yet. It's still building upon the things he's learning. And again, we've only done the first three units of it. And they do have these different rhyming sheets and things like that. So I do think it has been helpful, but definitely harder to implement than other core knowledge units, but still worth it because it's completely free. It just takes a little more effort on your part. So the only other thing he did for his preschool year is we were doing story time at the library, preschool story time, and about November, he, we were sitting in the middle of the story time, and he turns around, and he looks at me, he's like, can we go home? And I said, sure. And then um, when I came back for next week, he's like, eh, I don't really wanna go. And this could be because he had been going years prior with my, when my oldest or my middle child was going to story time, he tagged along. So he's, and they're doing new things, they're doing new books, new activities, so it's not like it's repetitive, but he was just kind of over the toddler scene and he wanted more, something a little bit above that. You know, when we did the activities or the rhyming and the games and stuff, he would participate a little, but he wasn't like excited about it. Never did the craft projects, maybe a handful of times he did the craft projects, but usually when the librarian would stop and the kids would move to the craft projects, he would go to the front of the room and pretend to be the librarian. So he'd get a little clipboard and then he would use the little um, chart they have. So he wanted to be the leader of the group and not really a student, which was quite funny because the librarian actually got on a little clipboard and she gave him a little pen and he would sit there and pretend like he was the librarian. Playing library is one of his favorite things to do. He loves to take books and just beep them out. So. I took that as a cue that he was kind of done with that and that's completely fine. We don't have to, you know, have activities for every single child. If they're done, they're done. So right now he's not doing any other outside activities besides, you know, our co-op. He does join in with that on Fridays and the expectations of that are pretty low. If he wants to play, go play. If he wants to participate in the activity, great. He's four and a half, so <laughs> we're pretty flexible at this age, but I don't think I need to have a scheduled class for him. And if he's done, He's done with something. So that is everything we did for this past year and the things we're doing 
We started in March and are continuing on into the summer. So if you have any questions about our preschool year, leave them in the comments below. If not, thank you for watching.